Here is a quick recording on um, how to do type font and some of the effects such as fur, putting an interesting tile texture on a type font, a typeface, um, breaking it into pieces, things like this. So to do this you need clean font, meaning that you need to be able to uh, convert them to a sub D, to a P sub. To, uh, so you can get the fur to, uh, you have enough points to get the fur to behave well, or the tile, uh, you might need to UV unwrap them or, um, or do the UV on them. So you could start with a font from uh, Illustrator, bring an AI and extrude it, but sometimes it has limitation. You could also trace this. So this is a quick video for my student. I'll make some cleaner one and nicer one for YouTube. Also, if you need to do displacement, uh, there's many ways on how to approach font. The best one, by the way, will just be to trace. If you have time to trace it well, then uh, bobs your ankle. Then you'll get very... Uh, if I knew I had to do this uh, world, whatever this is, uh, and I'm going to spend a lot of time because I want this to make, be made of lava or short fur. Then I would just use the pen tool, take time and or bridge. Uh, there's many, many ways you can do this. Um, what I mean by this is that when you bring a text, uh, I mean text, yeah, and I click here, it's great. But, look, if I go Geometry Freeze, and then I go Thicken, all of this is great. But, those points are not connected. Uh, in Soft Image, you could do this in one pass, but not here. And it's okay, but because of this, I cannot uh, go Shift Tab, uh, I cannot really grow fur out of it, uh, there's quite a bit of limitation. So I could also retopo this with a mesh constraint and do the polygon tool, but I'm going to show you a different way of approaching this. Uh, there's different trick on how to do this. So first of all, tracing an image, it's a bit slow, but you can do whatever you want. So I kind of like that way because uh, yes, it's a bit slow, but you control the entire process. So I can bring a backdrop image and here we can load and mine is on my desktop, it's a JPEG. You could also bring this as an AI and you would have the curve. But now what you could do with this is go N, Pen and just draw one quad here. Voila, that's it. And uh, then you can use the topology to grow it. Or what you can also do, let me show you, uh, let me delete this. <clears throat> In the pen, turn on wall mode. So something I like quite a bit, both sides. Here it depends on your drawing, uh, just try 50 mm and we'll see how big it is. And now when you click, you see it draw both sides. So in my case, I need double this, uh, mm, yeah? And look, this is pretty neat because it goes pretty fast. Okay, Q, and then you can do another one. So this is what I call the slow way. But very precise because you control the flow very well. Uh, pen again. Now, 
to match this very well um, you can go T sorry T in a polygon T and you, you don't have you just click then you can match you don't have to use the handle T is the element mode uh, meaning that whatever you click on it'll, it'll grab it and move it okay so a uh, hair slow but as you can tell I'm controlling the text quite well You could zoom in and you know, do it very precisely if you want. Now I can do it with this one. You could also move the entire edge. Uh, I could have put one more, two more here. Edge. You can always add it with C or even edge loop. But uh, look, if you go C now, as long as you're in a subcomponent, you can click once, once again, and it's there. Uh, we could even put two here. Then T. Voila. Uh, actually, still in T. I could adjust this too. Okay, and I'm almost done. Uh, now I need just to connect this so I can go edges, select this one and this one, and bridge those two. Yeah, Q to drop, and then select this guy and this guy, and bridge those two. Yeah, and we could clean here a little bit more. But, uh, I'm just going to hide this so you can see the control space bar and I'll go in perspective you can see the whole thing usually after something like this I would go geometry mesh cleanup okay and then thicken so yes it took a hair I'll, I'll show you other way that are even faster than this but this is very robust this actually would say might be the best way of doing it and if you think about it it's not that complicated uh, now the issue we have here it's very squarey very boxy so I can go in edge double click shift double click to select the loops like this we don't want this but we do want to go around uh, no I don't need those two so control double uh, shift you can uh, the one you don't want you can remove them at the end I'm holding shift, double click. Something like this. I do want this. Actually, yeah, we'll do those two. I think it'll look nicer. Make sure you don't have oh you're miss you're not missing any. Voila. Then I can go B. Here, sometimes I would just do a bit of a chamfer. It's a bevel, but because it's at zero, it does a chamfer effect. And I kind of like that, because it gives you room. Or you could, uh, if you really know that you want it smooth, uh, put uh, something smooth there. Myself, I would leave it at zero. Okay, now this is very flat at the center, so we can go edge, add loop and put it at the middle roughly shift click because we need one here oh here we have a T junction so we're going to be limited here I didn't thought of that uh, da -da -da -da. this is a tricky one let's undo that one 
this is good what I'm trying to do with this is that you can double click here go R and if you scale using the blue you see it uh, you might have to move them down a little bit uh, it gives that roundness maybe you don't need it here but if you do need it here um, let's try it again yeah, because it's going... I'm surprised he's not getting this one. Um, let me try this again. Sometime a cleanup can help. Like I said, we can do it by hand, but I'm just trying to see... No, I think it's better to do it by hand. Unless we can go Shift... And Shift here... Maybe we can do it like this and clean it after. Yeah, I think we can just clean this. So now we could select this, go delete, delete, and go C, connect this to this, do a new one by shift clicking to here. And uh, that new one, I think you have to go around. Like I say, don't worry, there's easier way of doing this, but this is really clean. Like with this, you can do a lot. C. Shift click to do new one. Voilà. Perfect. So now everything is well connected. I think it's worth to do a, a mesh, mesh cleanup again, just in case. Perfect. So now the cool thing with this font is that I can go shift tab you see and nothing breaks it's perfect oh I can go in polygon shift tab uh, sorry uh, shift D to apply the shift tab make sure you cut more clock shift tab it's cut more clock P sub Pixar subdivision it's the same thing uh, maybe one more time you can go shift D again so now it's super smooth so you, may, you might think, why all of this? So you could do, uh, now you can do some very interesting thing with this. Now, one thing I could have done, if I know I'm gonna put some sort of lava on it or tiling or, you know, something where I need the UV to be very clean, maybe I can unfold it. There's many ways of doing UV, I'm gonna go UV. So once again, UV is for the texture. Um, you could go planner and get this T and this T and then you'll have to connect all of this or if you're in a hurry like I'm always um, we can cheat it we can go edge like this and we can hide the C maybe on the back no not this one because for sure there's one side we won't see um, When I prepare, I was not using a letter T, I was using a 2. Uh, this should not be hard to do. I'm trying to see what's the easiest. Uh, I'm try trying to see like if it was made of... Uh, if someone saw it. I think we can go like this. There's a faster way. Okay, I'm back. I was just had a, a little bug. So yeah, you don't have to do UV, but it's like I say, if you do tiling or repeti a repetitive thing, hair, fur, lava type, it'll be nice to have a clean uh, way of telling the computer where to put the, uh, the texture. So one thing you can do is select both like this, using shift. Then you can go up arrow. The only you should go this way. And up arrow on the keyboard. And we could hide the sim there actually. Now if you know you're gonna look at it here, for sure you're never gonna see this guy. So maybe in case, instead do it here. I think if this was the metal fabric and you were doing a seam there 
Yeah, that should work. Let's try that. We could do also all around. Uh, I don't know if you'll let me grow both at the same time. No, that's what I thought. Down arrow to stop. Uh, we could just do it this way. So now I'll have to use shift. But I think we could have done maybe a smaller one. I don't think we need a seam that big. But oh well, let's try it. So I'm like this, I go UV. And here, don't worry about this, this is my old one. Uh, we go unwrap. You see it has the seam and you click and you drag. So that's actually not bad. Um, so there's different method you could try but I think this one is good uh, the more you click the more I try to unfold it or you can type see 20 is not enough it's like pelting something uh, but I think two, 300 is pretty good we're trying to have all of them the same size then you can go Q, deselect, and you could go also relax uh, here. That helps sometimes. And same thing, you could drag, and there's two mode, three, four mode. Actually, this is pretty good adaptive. And then we could rotate it. So now the rotation really depends on what texture you're going to put there. So I'm going to leave it like this. So what we've done is that now, even if we have a lot of points, look, I could go um, Polygon, uh, Shift D, Catmull Clock, so it's a, a tab, a Shift Tab, and you see, even if we do it, uh, I think this is enough, but we could do it even one more time, so it's very high res. And um, I forgot to make this round. <laughs> Just realize this. Let's go back. The whole point I put uh, is to uh, push this out like this to make it round a bit. And I forgot. Uh, we don't want to make the top one round. I'm holding Control to deselect. And we want to scale them like this, just a little bit, so it's more round. And which, what else I forgot? This way. Now this one I did it. Yeah, so I'm good. Uh, like I said before, uh, often I go mesh cleanup just to make sure that everything is facing well. So now we have the UV. So if I use a preset with tiling F6, such as uh, Enhance Modo Tutorial, this one, it's going to look at my uh, UV texture. So if now I go F8, you see the dot are much better than before. And yes, there's a seam, but it's hidden in the back. It's where I cut them. You see here the seam? So really think of this like fabric. So this is very organic, so you're not going to get it perfect, especially the way I did it. But this is the quick way. You could also do it by hand and do it perfect. But I know you guys like speed and you don't want to do everything. So. so now the cool thing with this in Polygon, if I go Shift D even twice, you see the UV are respected. So if I was to look at the font from this angle, it's super clean. Like there's no seam. It maps map perfectly. And now you can do some very interesting thing. You could go um, duplicate this one and make it a displacement if you want. I 
hope I picked the right one I don't think I did the right one so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna take those three shift and make the three displacement because I don't really know what they do so voila and if you want less you go under your material and where it said displacement you could go 10 mm okay and you could still texture this you could still uh, come here and you know give this a color now it looks like a uh, sorry this one yeah it's still good uh, what else uh, now that it has clean UV you see you could even try things like this and it would work pretty well uh, or even go crazy uh, you could even uh, put displacement on it let me save this one I found it quite cute uh, uh, letter T uh, so look uh, bath you could try now because you got the UV so they might not work in every cases but they'll be much better than just a regular one now sometimes what happens you'll see them very big or very small it's because whoever did the preset save it uh, much smaller so in model 14 you can scale texture but here you can just go polygon R and make your letter usually it's way smaller and it will make the the texture way bigger or oh, either way as long as you you got the UV on. Um, here it doesn't matter because now we're UV. This is before the UV. Sorry. Uh, okay, I'm tired. Let me show you what I wanted to show you. Uh, so yeah, now you could try a lot of them. You see, you'll get uh, much more interesting. So this is like a neon. Uh, organic I think the one I wanted to show you was no it's not those one here I think it was this one so maybe this one is not using UV so now we'll go in polygon and make it smaller you see so here it works it's because this it must be using a cubic or a global of some sort uh, I think I went too small we could reassign the UV to it but it must be using a non UV uh, this one has displacement so I can go here and uh, put it a little bit more just to see it and under here you could uh, turn off drive displacement so you see the displacement better it's actually not very uh, high um, hmm. oh because it's a bump sorry I thought it was a displacement uh, surface shading displacement okay I'm way too high that's funny um, so go back here and maybe five voila that's what I was looking for but uh, I don't think it's the one I use I must have used something else or oh, this one that's the one I use yeah, and this is displacement. You see? So by scaling it, now you get more of it. Um, let me try so I don't say anything stupid. Maybe it's picking up the UV. If it's picking up the UV, then the scale won't do anything. 
yeah I think it's picking up the UV unless I go smaller now it's working so it's not picking up the UV we can reassign them so you see now they are bigger so this is very neat because you can make very complicated font this way um, and now if you click here you see it's this one so that shininess you can remove it by going to uh, make it more rough so it's less plasticky and you could 3d print this you could go geometry back and uh, actually get the all of this to be modeled just make sure your displace your draft is off otherwise it's going to look very uh, ugly like this and if you go f9 you'll get a better so because we have uv here we can also do fur now so i will do it now so fur uh, and you could try any of those so let's try this one always say yes and now if you go f8 and that's because we have uvs so here what we need to do you can play with the shading for sure but the most important is fur material so the spacing is how many do you have like the count so if I go 0.5 mm I'll get twice more you see it's going to take longer to render but it's going to be more crowded and the more crowded is the less hole you're like this you're going to get that's for sure but you don't want too many of them the length oh sorry 0.3 mm because I scaled the thing the the length it's how long so if you went uh, 2 mm they'll be very short and here it looks a bit better so maybe not 2 but maybe 8 it looks like carpet voila uh, those, this is the two really big settings uh, max segment is how many of them how many are subdivisions so if they are very curly you will need more but that's going to slow down your computer um, clump is very cool it's if they were wet so just try go maybe 30% and it's going to bring them all together by patch you see like wet uh, that might be a bit too much here 12 um, curl if they are curly so you can try that I think it's usually one or the other if you put both together it might be a hair too much uh, there's kink there's a lot of things you can play with okay uh, one last thing while I'm here I wanted to show you with fonts if you want to break them there's a tool called geometry mesh shader uh, wait why is this gray out everything is good geometry my shadow here uniform it's a 30 and it would slice your font in 30 pieces so now look it's pretty cool huh? So now you can go F8, and you see, uh, now you don't want a sharp edge here, so you would go here and say uh, 2 mm at rounded, so you get the rise rounded, 2 is too much, maybe 1. Okay, uh, sorry it took a little while, I'll make another video tomorrow on how to do that even faster. But as you know, the, the hard way is often the, the most powerful one. Okay, take care, bye.